I want to do this first because what we, I want to talk about critical theory in general, critical gender theory. What, the, the big battle in Loudoun County is actually over a transgender policy bill. Right. So it's not just race theory. Yeah. But I got to I got I got to pull up this book. <laughs> I was looking at this book. We got this. How to be an anti-racist by Ibram X. Kendi. Huh. Ultimate summary, lessons, goals, checklists, and action plans this is made press. So w- w- what is this? What is this <clears throat> in- insane book? W- All right, so there's still like um, a minute and a half into this video or whatever, and I'll I'll let them finish, but I think what they should have done is get some quotes of people who are in this discussion. Like, again, um, in their thumbnail, they show Ibram X. Kennedy, and I think they should really, like, hey, Fung Brothers, if you want to dive into this issue and if you want to look at it on a different lens, I would definitely look into James Lindsay. Like, he is, like, probably number one talking about this issue, and... So what is critical race theory? Everybody says we can't define it. Well, my name is James Lindsay, and I've been studying this stuff for a while, and I'm making an encyclopedia on my website called newdiscourses.com. The encyclopedia is called Translations from the Wokish, and I can tell you what critical race theory is. They say we can't define it, but let's break it down. Let's define it. Critical race theory is a movement in scholarship, activism, and especially law and getting into education and other fields that's designed to reconsider the relationship between race, racism, and power. To be more frank about it, it is the the belief that the fundamental organizing principle of society is racism and that this racism was created by white people specifically to oppress people of other races and that they maintain that racism so that they can maintain their own advantage in society. That's what critical race theory is all about. We could also say that it's a neo-Marxist strategy to make use of racial minorities to try to make way for a cultural revolution in America, just like Herbert Marcuse wrote in 1969 in his so-called essay on liberation. Hey, yo, what's up, guys? So I'm coming to you another video. And again, we're touching base with the Fung Brothers because, you know, in the last video I was doing on them, they were talking about will Asian Americans turn red turn Republican in the next general election, you know? And in that video, I was saying like, yo, we are witnessing a red pill journey in real time. And so in this video, they're talking about CRT, critical race theory, you know? And if they are diving into this topic, you know, it is, they are just, and if they're truly researching it and not just looking at one side, if they're trying to look at both sides and trying to look at it as objectively as possible, they're gonna see like what, like, a lot of people on the conservative side at least see and hopefully they'll they'll agree because you know if you're watching if if the best person to look into CRT is um, James Lindsay so hopefully they talk about it so I haven't seen this video and again this is a reaction video so we'll see what arguments and what framing and because again I don't know what they're taking so I, I'm definitely invested in how their thought process here in like like I said this is a red pill journey in real time so i'm looking to forward to seeing if that's true and so we'll see what they gotta say so with that said shall we begin But first, of course, if you're new to my channel, what is up? My name is Mitch, Maverick Mitch. Hey, Mitch, Mitch, all the Mitches, the real Mitcher, and pretty much I like talking about what I'm talking about. So, current events, reviews, pop culture, social political commentary, be sure to check out all those videos as you're finishing this video. And of course, please like, share, and subscribe as it feeds the algorithm, and I'm trying to build my channel to 3,000. Let's go, go do it. So with that said, roll it. Will the debate of critical race theory determine the next president of the United States? Maybe. But should it? Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here. Critical race theory uh, has is a really hot debate right now. Governor DeSantis of Florida just banned it from being taught in schools because he said it was going to be divisive. It was going to make people feel really bad, make them feel guilty, and just be destructive to the overall unity of the kids. Um, David, why are we talking about it? We are talking about it because CRT has been a big debate for a few years, but also a lot of people think that Ron DeSantis is going to use anti-wokeness or inverse wokeness to become the president of the United States, whether that's in two, six, or 10 years. Mm. And I will say, Governor, I'm not like promoting him at all, obviously, but I'm just saying like- like, (laughs) Okay, pause. Okay, so again, I'm loving that, again, they're diving into the social political commentary stuff a lot more nowadays, right? They did a lot of food stuff, but I think they're getting, their minds are changing as far as their age, and they're getting a little bit more serious in in regards to the channel. I think they are doing great, especially they have millions of subscribers, so um, I think this is really great. And of course, 
they are still in the moment of this journey, this red pill journey. Like, okay, we're still not, we're not Republicans, we're not conservatives, or whatever. So they're very much playing in the middle. Like, hey, yo, I, I was there with you too. Um, but I, I, I just love it because I can see in the next two years, they'll be like, yo, MAGA. Yo, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're just gonna be MAGA. And so, again, they're getting into the conversation with Ron DeSantis, right? And the, the CRT stuff. So, I'm, again, I'm really hyped in this video already because I'm, I, I just want to see what they got to talk about. Seems like uh, a conservative guy who has a lot of the same policies and beliefs as Trump, but minus all the dirtbag crazy attitudeness. Right, yeah, he's... Pause. So, see, they still have a negative view of Trump, right? And so, continue. Sort of, uh, just trying to catch the upside while mitigating the downside. He has a clean social. record as of now, from what I know. Right. Seems not as scummy. Seems sort of just like a stoic baseball player, lawyer type, which all sort of fits. By the way, guys, I would never move to Florida. I like living in New York City, despite my complaints about it. Just letting you know where I do or do not stand. Okay. Should these issues... I, and I think that's also going to play into them them staying in New York, right? And I think that may play into the red pill journey. Like, obviously, there's still, like, red pill people in New York. Um, Ariel Scarella, um, don't run... Don't walk, run productions or whatever. Um, Andrew. Um, so, yeah. And I think... Critical race theory kind of falls in with the gender identity issues, such as like the Leah Thomas thing, which uh, Governor DeSantis spoke up about, which kind of made him like a star yeah. in the conservative. Well, that, that's right? how he's like winning right now yeah. by going against both. But so I guess like, and let's just pause right there because I, I do this thing because a lot of people talk about like CRT, like yeah, there's a larger topic there. So I'm pausing every time because I'm really excited here. So it's a bigger topic, like, whether it's critical race theory or critical gender theory, right, or, or critical theory, critical race praxis, critical, uh, all of this stuff, right? And so it all kind of falls on the same thing. Uh, in the deep down, in the root of it, it's Marxism, right? <laughs> and so, but it's hard, it's hard to, like, define a lot of these things, especially if you're, if you're not really using the correct words and all this stuff. And so, uh, on the surface level, people think it's just about, like, um, racial history, which it isn't. These are kind of the issues that it seems like people are most emotional about, about. And do you think these issues will be the reason why people will win uh, the next election? Yeah, I think uh, there's always emotional issues, whether it's abortion, capital punishment, gun rights. Uh, you know, they rank two, three, four, five, or number one, depending on who you are as a voter. But honestly, do I think that elections should be won on these type of issues? So... On the surface, and I think things could change, but I think the next general election, and and we'll see how the, the midterms elections do, but I think the general elections will be mostly on the economy and inflation and, and national security. Um, other topics will definitely play a role, um, whether it's pro-life, pro-choice, um, critical race theory, and all this stuff. A lot of that will definitely play a role leading up to it, but... I, I think there's larger issues to be at play, but again, I think at least in this topic, it will help people kind of figure out where they where the um, battle lines are, right? And so, yeah. No, because I think that a lot of these issues are just kind of emotional markers for other things, right. but a lot of people don't want to talk about the other things. I, I will say this, I don't think they're emotional in the way, like I don't want to write them off, like they're not significant. These are still significant, but they're more symbolic of something else where the people take the issue that they can understand them the best or they think they understand. I agree with this. I think uh, a lot of people don't fully understand critical race theory. I'm not even 100% sure on it. But I'm saying like... <laughs> no, and, and that's true. I, I think it's a very convoluted like... And I 100% agree with Drew Andrew on this one because like um, it is very much of a convoluted topic unless you are very much like, like I said, if you're listening to Ibram X. Kennedy and on the same time you're looking listening to James Lindsay and all this stuff and like Nicole Hannah Jones and all that stuff and as well as some other like even Jordan Peterson has talked about this stuff too and so unless you're like really deep in this but even then it's very esoteric and it's very like in the weeds of all this stuff so um, while it is interesting to talk about, it is hard to get dive into. So I, 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 I agree with him. They just think they understand something 
very simply, and then they just act. They just vote on that yeah. because because the other issues are too complicated. I think that like the other policies and stuff like that. You know, there's been a lot of scientific studies to show that the more complex something is, the more likely people are willing to paint it white or black yeah. and very polarized. Which is funny because that's human nature because you're putting your head in the sand to hide from the complexity and nuanced and gray zones of an issue. But uh, like we said, it's very nuanced and. Kim, but, I mean, uh, Kanye versus Ski. But literally, you know, it's, such, it's such a stupid, simple issue. But the mo more complex the issue is, the more nuanced and complex you have to look at it as. So by you simplifying it, it's actually like taking the most away from that. Right, right. And like it, you're you're stripping it down to like almost something where it's not even that. Yeah, and I think that if you look at CRT, from what I've been told, I did a a little bit of research guys i try to be very balanced when i do my research i read this perspective that perspective centrist moderate out of left field and basically you know there's two schools of thought in it one is like a little bit more hardcore one is less hardcore it's about how uh white people are the more dominant group in this country and how did that come to be whether it was taking maybe stolen indian land or native american land i'm sorry depending on how you <laughs> I, I love that. I love that he has to catch himself in the PC narrative. And so, no, I'm like, even though I would say the same thing, I would say like indigenous people and Native American, but it's funny that he has to correct himself immediately because that's, that's, that's a side. That's, he's still a little, they're still a little bit in the middle, left leaning, right? And so they kind of need to be very, still very much PC or else run the risk of being canceled, right? African Americans and why uh, the generational wealth accumulation numbers are like wildly, wildly different after all these hundreds of years. Uh, these are all like true things, right? Those things all happened in history. But how do we perceive them? Do white people need to feel bad every day about it? If they do feel bad about it, Andrew, on the more extreme end, do they need to be like, work to equalize it every day and take their privilege and like dole it out to all the people who are like lower than them on this pyramid or that pyramid? You know what I mean? There's a variety of pyramids in, in the game, you know? You guys let us know in the comments down below what you think and if you got opinions on this. I have, uh, I heard someone describe critical race theory as, oh, we're not trying to teach critical race theory because that's something that you learn in grad school and law school because that's like old theory from the 80s. But we're trying to teach race critically to students. And I was like, that doesn't sound as extreme. That makes a lot of sense to me. I could see that being more implemented on maybe like high school level. I don't know about like the third grade level. I think that's, you know, uh, that seems a little early, but I think it's a lot easier to just say no to something than to figure out how to implement it if it's said yes to, you know, and I think that it is on the left to figure that out and uh, implement it in a correct way because, you know, it's easy to just be like, no, I don't want it. Leave it alone. And then the other people are like, oh, shoot. But if we do get yes, like we got to figure out how to how to execute it. Also, being on the outside, you know, we took a DNA test, David, and uh, I, we're zero percent black or white right. <laughs> yeah, there's zero percent uh, <laughs> any sort of like i'm like 99.999 percent asian right um <laughs> i don't know i do think that i all right, so there's still like um, a minute and a half into this video or whatever, and I'll, I'll let them finish, but I think what they should have done is get some quotes of people who are in this discussion. Like, again, um, in their thumbnail, they show Ibram X. Kennedy, and I think they should really, like, hey, Fung Brothers, if you want to dive into this issue and if you want to look at it on a different lens, I would definitely look into James Lindsay. Like, he is, like probably number one talking about this issue and if anything if I could summarize critical race theory it's that it not it's not looking at race critically it's, it's actually the idea is that there is applied racism in all facets of life so he does this um, example where he talks about like a a tailor shop tailor shop and so I'll probably link it below and so you want you want to check it out and so it's this idea in which you know how how did race play into the scenario not that if race occurred it's it's though how how did race up happen you know and so it, it is this idea in which it, it is racist in itself right and you know you have this idea where white people will succeed or 
whatever ethnicity succeeds or don't succeed based upon their race and obviously I think that is wrong I think you I think anyone could overcome whatever historical whatever and and just in their own merits sure there's always circumstances and everyone is born in different circumstances whether they are better off or or not you know but I have seen people who went into military got out of uh, that life you know and I have seen people who are rich and and I don't know where I was going with that <laughs> so um uh, yeah. Anyway, so, guys, let us know. A little confusing too. Yeah, let anyways. us know in the comment section below what you think about this CRT <laughs> issue. What do you think about the debate? What do you think? Do you know? Do you think Ron DeSantis will probably become the president within the next ten years? Probably using tactics based off this issues. And uh, you know, it's just politics, dog, guys. But we gotta talk about it because this is the life we're living in. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. All right. So cool. I mean. Again, this was very surface level. Um, I think, you know, like I said earlier, what could have served this video better is if they actually put in lines from like, like I said, Ibram X. Henry or Nicole Hannah-Jones or whatever. And same thing with like, like I said, on the other side, James Lindsay and everything. So I think it could have served the video better if they gave examples of like CRT. Um, again, for the left, they, they treat it as this, it's like racial history. Why won't you want to teach racial history? No, this is not what's actually happening. You, you are, what critical race theory is really is again, talking about how, how people are oppressed because of their race and, 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 and their privileges and everything. And so it's not like we can, conservatives are all cool t about teaching history as objective history, but you don't have to say like, okay, well, um, Western civilization bad, white people bad, all this stuff. And so you don't have to label it in the view of oppression and oppressed, right? And so that's the issue there. And especially when you're, t and when you're talking about CRT in school, it's not like your regular history class. Like what, again, if you watch like a Tim Pool and he had guests that actually brought in CRT issues like books, on the, on the, on the podcast right and so it's it's even going to the base level of like even math problems so like the example is instead of saying like a word problem like hey like like Johnny has two apples and and all that stuff right it's going to say like um Johnny who is white it has five apples and uh Tyrone has one apple. Um, who, who, who in the situation is more oppressed? You like, you know, like um, you, you insert like these racial topics in the word problems because you want them to think about racial issues rather than actually just think, think of it objectively. I want to do this first because what we, I want to talk about critical theory in general, critical gender theory. Well, the, the big battle in Loudoun County is actually over a transgender policy bill. Right. So it's not just race theory. Yeah. But I, I got I to gotta, I gotta pull up this book. <laughs> I was looking at this book. We got this. How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. Huh. Ultimate summary, lessons, goals, checklists, and action plans is made press. So w w what is this? What is this in insane book? So this is a book <laughs> that you use while you read his book that Fairfax County, Virginia, for example, spent $24,000 buying and requiring children to read. And so then you get this workbook that accompanies it and you would have loved it, right? You would have just filled in the blank. You would have said, oh, okay, I have to go. To, this is my next prompt. You would have been a great student going through this workbook. So tell us some of the great questions that they've got in there. Well, I want to go to the, to the, let's go to, let's go to the back. Let's see what we got. Okay. Um, well, those are action steps. First, I'll just point out they have these these areas where you can write mm. lessons. Number one, queer racism is a strong collection of racist policies leading to inequity among race sexualities that can be substantiated by racist ideas as regards race sexualities. Queer anti-racism is the phenomenal gathering of anti-racist policies leading to equity amongst race sexualities for authentication by anti-racist ideas on race sexualities. Every race sexuality is unique. Did that mean anything? I feel like I missed a step. <laughs> did I, yeah, did I miss something? It's What's so race Ian, sexuality? It's Answer so, the question. It's uh, intentional. Yes. Yeah, it's so intentional word salad mm -hmm. because they want to confuse people and make them dizzy with yes. their assumptions. They have so many strange assumptions in every sentence. Okay, so wrapping it up, I think, yo, Fun Brothers, if you're watching this video, I think obviously I am, I'm, I'm on board, I'm invested, I'm loving your topics here, um, I'm invested if you're actually looking into these topics, and so if anything, I, if I give you any advice is um, look, look, look at the narrative, look how, 
look how what is happening on a general scale like not just like not like you were saying in the outside but in a way it is but like for the lo a lot of things on the left they're they're dismissing this as if this is they're gaslighting this whole situation as if this doesn't exist right and and for the right they are labeling hey this is actually what is happening and i think a lot of the things that is being convoluted in the whole thing is because again like you were even sending saying is that like this co this topic is very complex so um i would personally i would like i said um, I'll probably link it below. I'll probably do like a segment where a little cut about James Lindsay and like I'll link my other videos on critical race theory. So um, it, I think it is definitely beneficial for you to look into this um, so that you you can talk a little bit more about it. Um, but like but I agree with you in a sense um, that there are larger issues, especially that's probably going to be in play um, towards the midterms and into the um, 2024 elections. Like, if I'm correct, Roe versus Wade is going to be under review in June, and I think that's going to take a large conversation. I think the CRT stuff before you, the Ukraine stuff was a big topic. But now that the Ukraine stuff and inflation and all this other stuff that's happening and Twitter um, taking over the, the news cycle, uh, CRT is not really um, it, as prominent anymore. Um, a lot of the groomer stuff that kind of plays into so critical gender theory. So a lot of the groomer bills and don't say gay, the, the, the don't say gay bill, even though there was no gay in the actual bill, you know. So there's a lot of topics here, and so but I agree with your their assessment as far as. It's a good topic, but it's not going to be a heavy topic, right? And so, yeah. So, with that said, comment below. Tell me what you think. I definitely enjoyed this video, and I'm looking forward to them doing another social political commentary video so I can do more videos talking about them, you know? And so, again, I'm looking forward to them and seeing what what they are unraveling in all of this -ness. So, yeah. So, with that said, thank you for watching. You follow me on my Instagram at Hey Mitch Mitch. I'm also Rumble, um, Hey Mitch Lozada, and I'm gonna get, set up my Twitter soon enough. I'll probably make it uh, Maverick Mitch. And so, yeah, thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Peace, peace, peace. Be with you.